The Delta State government on Wednesday disclosed that two new cases of coronavirus have been confirmed in the state. The Commissioner for Health there, Dr. Modi Onoye, made the disclosure in a statement in Asaba. According to him, 11 persons were quarantined in holding centers, while 140 contacts have been monitored across the state. He said that the new cases had brought the total confirmed cases in the state to six, with one debt and five active cases. Joining us live via Skype from Canada is medical doctor Ruki Deye. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello. Things seem to have ended. All right. Um, 91 new confirmed coronavirus cases in Nigeria, a drop uh, from the 117 of Wednesday morning. Should we be cautiously optimistic from the drop um, we have seen that it will be sustained? Hello? I can hear you. Good morning. Can, good morning. Can you hear me? No, I can't. I wasn't able to hear you before. Just joining in. Okay, you're live now. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I know you are in Canada, but there are developments in Nigeria. I'd like to uh, pick your brain on. 91 new confirmed coronavirus cases. There's been a drop from the 117 that we witnessed on Wednesday morning. Should we be cautiously optimistic that the drop would be sustained? I would say absolutely not. In actual fact, you should be exactly more vigilant. Um, the drop from 117 to 91 is not really significant um, statistically. And for sure, I'm not um, exactly um, confident about your contact tracing and how many people are being tested. As of yesterday, I think only 8,000 people have been tested in the whole country, which is really, really low. So you get a low test rate and then you get a low yield. And so the fact that you only had um, 91 new cases opposed to 117, for me, doesn't mean you should rest on any odds at all. In fact, we should be more vigilant. The stringent measures to do social distancing must continue. And it's very critical to keep your, your hygiene up. So hand washing, don't touch your hands, your nose, you know, your face to your mucous membranes and things like that. Right. We still don't have a answer for coronavirus, as you know. There's no vaccine and there's no, no treatment, contrary to what was being um, proposed. Even the chloroquine is not even the good answer that everyone was praying for. All so, right. Um, let, 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 me, let me ask you about this confession by Nigeria Center for Disease Control that the source of 300, um, rather 203 patients who tested positive for the disease is unknown. They cannot verify how they got the infection. How worried are you about this? This is, this is very concerning. Nosocomial infection means you can't um, get the index case, means there's community um, infection now. So it's now going to be an endemic infection, means it's not coming from known cases. So these asymptomatic carriers are the um, sources of the infection. And we don't know who, ca who has it because they have no symptoms. So they have no fever, they have no cough, they're just spreading the virus. So we should be really concerned. So 323 not known how they caught so it. 203 Times that by 1,000. You know, so you can imagine all the people walking around looking normal, but they're actually COVID-19 positive. So what we are saying to everyone, pretend and act as if you have got the virus because you don't know who really has it if you haven't had a test. Now, if they test everyone, how many positive cases would you have? That's the real question. We're not testing very widely. We're choosing who to test. Even some symptomatic people are not being tested because they're telling them if you're not very ill, don't come out. And this is an issue. So how do you know who has it and who doesn't until people are dying? And we, can, we know that this virus will kill you. I mean, scores and, of, of tens of thousands have died. Hundred and you know, hundred um, well, over two hundred thousand people have died in, okay. in the United States alone. We're approaching almost fifty thousand. So what's, it's, what, it's a what's your view? What, what's your view on uh, federal government through the Ministry of Health uh, giving a new directive as of um, yesterday or Monday uh, that all confirmed cases of the virus um, in a state must be treated in the state as against moving to another state, especially now that state governors have decided that it is time to shut borders, interstate borders. 
For me, I think that's a very good move. First of all, the virus can't move. Humans move the virus. So shutting down movement, closing borders, I think is a very smart thing to do because then you, you know you're containing the movement of, of humans. Even within cities, even within towns, people just stay at home. So it's a good move. And really, why would you be importing cases to other um, states to treat them? Every state is, has a government. They need to be self-sufficient in treating their um, um, citizens, is what I would say. So definitely, if you don't have the capacity, you need to learn how to treat coronavirus. Have your isolation centers, have your PPEs, and, and have the um, ancillary treatment, that's what we call them, to, to help the patient, including your ventilators, when they can't breathe. So that's what should be happening. If that's truly the case, then I'm, it, I very much welcome it. I was, to be honest, quite um, surprised that at um, a very recent funeral where thousands of people didn't even maintain any social distancing And that, that would be the and burial of the chief of staff. Let, let's talk about the speed that of That was testing. really appalling, and that was televised live. I'm, I was wondering, where are our national leaders? Where are our healthcare workers? Where are the doctors? Where are the people who took that body from a hospital? I mean, I, I was really, really, honestly, we were all really astonished and we, yeah, we were that, gasping. That, that was, that was roundly co condemned across uh, borders uh, here in Nigeria. It was, it was uh, very dangerous, actually, because that's how exactly the virus spreads. Okay, that's let's, exactly let's, let's, let's move a not little do, Not more than 10 persons. Okay, um, let's move a little away from that and talk about the speed of testing. You did allude earlier that it's important that mock testing be carried out. As it stands, we have about 3,000 tests per day. That's the, um, uh, the projected figure. We don't know if that is actually happening. Um, when it's other not countries... possible because you have a total of 8,000 or so tests. How dare you say you do 3,000 tests a day? This has been going on for months. At least we end into the third month of this disease in Nigeria. Do you Nigeria. think they can speed up and the process? And this is like April. Since February, we've been having coronavirus. March for sure. And then you're telling me you do 3,000 tests a day. That simply cannot be true. It's not, it's not possible. Okay, can they speed up the process, do you think? Especially with the... They give us daily briefing. We see that they are making efforts. But can this be speed up? Especially with the fears being expressed that Nigeria is one of those countries that the world, I mean, the world bodies are concerned that if this spills over, if this goes into community um, transmission, we might have more than a pandemic uh, on our hands. Absolutely. First of all, we have um, the highest, let's just say, below poverty rate in Nigeria. We have congestion, we have poor housing, we have poor circulation in terms of um, air. The rooms are, you know, you, you can see some housing situations are, are really, really like shanty towns. So if indeed we do get the similar type of spread that we've seen in Europe, in America, where hundreds of people are dying in a day, in a day, two, three thousand, four thousand people die. I'm really, really concerned. We certainly do not have the capacity. We do not have the means. And to be honest with you, it's, it's just best we don't even imagine or dream of such a scenario. So what I would say to Nigerians, um, please just don't believe the, the hype that you it's not really here, it's all propaganda. It's not. The fact that there's some things protecting us from this massive people dropping dead on the street it it's really doesn't mean we are safe at all. Indeed, the virus spreads from person to person. We know that. It's a droplet airborne infection now. And they're saying use a mask all the time. Even WHO has alluded to that. Initially, they were resisting it. You don't have to be using a surgical mask because those are really in high demand for people really on the front lines. But cover your mouth and nose, even with a simple scarf. And they've seen lots of made in a bar, innovative one with even face shields. That's really interesting, and that can work. So please understand that this is real. The threat is not, um, as you can see in America, it's affecting African Americans at the highest, and Hispanic people because they have the most, um, highest number of comorbid um, factors, you know, poor nutrition, obesity, um, diabetes, and other other things. All right, let, let, let's try to maximize in, in time. Let, let's, let, have these I, I need to pick your thoughts on a lot of issues, but let's try to maximize time and just squeeze in one more. Um, one win at a time, a lot of persons will say, how chaired are you about the uh, recovery of the Kaduna stage uh, governor, El Rufai? 
I'm very happy. I mean, El Rafa is one of the, I would say, sprightly do um, governors in the north. He speaks his mind. He seems progressive, like I said, seems because I, I wouldn't say I know him that well. But um, I mean, when he did all the firing of those teachers who were poorly teaching the, the um, secondary and primary school students, I was really impressed with that. So yes, we need people like El Rafa to be alive, to do the job, and to mean what they say. To be honest with you, like you said, he's a he's a big part of the of the government. He's an APC governor in an APC um, government in the federal government, and so I, I would be appalled that he wasn't appalled about what happened. In fact, there were some videos actually about El Rufai, and I'm calling him out now, walking about even before he was tested neg negative um, without a mask. And people were asking about that video. I, I don't know how old the video was, but he shouldn't have done that if he really did. So, Governor El Rufai, I'm happy you're well. Please keep social distancing serious in your state. Shut your borders. Make sure that you give palliatives to those people who rely on their daily bread to, to survive. I'm talking right. those 2,000, 1,000 naira a day people profit. You need uh, to help Ricky. them to stay at home by helping them to have something to eat. Dr. Ruki, thank you very much uh, for your time. And please stay safe. And you. And you as well. Always a pleasure. Have a great day. You too.